Hi, I'm Tin Connect's Chief Meteorologist Tammy Souza. And we want to bring you up to date on a turn of events out in the tropics. We've been watching this tropical storm, Phoenix, and it's out here uh, just to the south of Puerto Rico. It is now strengthened to a Category 1 hurricane. Well, Jim, we do have a problem. We have a new hurricane. That's Hurricane Phoenix. It was a tropical storm earlier today, but now it's reached hurricane intensity. The good news, it's only a Category 1. But notice what I put up here. Now, those of you in Tampa and St. Petersburg, this is still a long way out, but it's October, and the favorable hurricane track is to go to the northwest and then turn back toward Florida. You can see this system is going to come up here as a Category 1 hurricane moved by the Cayman Islands here in about 24 hours. But notice, major hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico in about four and a half to five days, and that's bad news. Well, Jim, it just keeps getting worse now. We've got another update, and we have a 105 mile per hour Category 2 hurricane, and it's rapidly intensifying here right near the Yucatan Channel, and it's going to come into the Gulf of Mexico within about 6 to 12 hours. Now, hurricane landfall is certain uh, uh, in the Florida area, we think. Uh, that's the most likely in the central West Florida area, and as a Category 4 or even a, possibly a Category 5 hurricane, so we have an extreme to catastrophic event unfolding here with Hurricane Phoenix. We are still smack dab in the middle of the cone. We, at this point, we have all the hurricane watches in place, and I do hope you've started to make all of your preparations for your family, your pets, and all of your belongings, because we are now looking at who has to get out first, and we are going to be looking at an incredibly large storm surge, anywhere from about 10 to 20 feet, or possibly more, if this does make landfall as a Category 5 hurricane. I've been waiting an hour and 57 minutes for just some gas. Thousands heeded the warnings. This was the largest evacuation in history, and it lasted more than 24 hours. We're beginning to see the tropical storm force winds already in Sarasota and Manatee County. So as this begins to approach, we are going to be very, very concerned about anybody left behind getting themselves together and getting out. Please take this very seriously. You need to make your preparations. If you haven't already gotten out of the area, you do need to do so. Well, the latest with potentially catastrophic Hurricane Phoenix, this is now a Category 5 hurricane expected to move to the northeast and make landfall sometime around noon uh, in central Pinellas County. And of course, the winds counterclockwise around this area of low pressure will push water into the bay and cause storm surge flooding as much, even in downtown Tampa, over 21 feet, perhaps even a little bit higher than that. It will literally flood the barrier islands and push water up into northern Manatee County into the river here, and that'll cause flooding all the way along that region. 160 mile per hour winds and of course that will cause damages to at least half of the structures in and around the Tampa Bay area, especially on the beaches and anywhere that may be affected by water because that water is going to surge in to the bay and have nowhere to go and cause flooding anywhere from Apollo Beach to the Port of Tampa to Oldsmar, even around eastern uh, eastern uh, Pinellas County in downtown St. Petersburg. Now, once it does make landfall around noon with those strong winds, it likely will weaken some, perhaps, but still uh, Category 5 or eventually a strong Category 4 inland. So Pasco, Hernando, Sumter, Citrus County, you are not out of the woods just because of you are off of the coast. You're still going to see a lot of damage with very high winds as this storm moves into the inland areas. Now, onshore wind piles water along the coast. That's what a storm surge does. As a storm storm nears, wind will drive that water ashore, and that's what causes the flooding. And again, we're talking about completely flooded barrier islands, places like Longboat Key, for example, uh, Bradenton Beach, that entire area will be flooded over with water, parts of Pinellas County as well. Now, a hurricane warning remains in effect for all of the Tampa Bay area. 13 to 21 foot storm surge, maybe more than that, even in places like downtown Tampa. Uh, barrier islands will flood, as I mentioned, bridges and causeways destroyed. So again, if you uh, have not left your home yet, do, you, do not leave your home. Go to an interior room. You can see there's a lot of debris down here on the ground. 
just chunks of asphalt that's been lifted off the streets and just blown down the way. This is right when the outer eye wall is moving through this area. Winds are gusting up to 97 miles an hour. Yes, water is all in the house. The roof is completely caved in on us. We need emergency assistance, please. Okay, man, we can't respond right now because of the condition of the hurricane. So many people did not heed warnings to evacuate, rescuers are challenged to find ways back out on the islands and into hard-hit areas to conduct search and rescue operations. Currently, there are 165 known deaths and more than 30,000 are missing. According to the preliminary damage assessments, at least 1 million buildings were at least moderately damaged. That is over 67% of the total number of buildings in the Tampa Bay area. An estimated 480,000 structures are completely destroyed. Before the hurricane, the region had approximately 14,000 hospital beds available for use. It is estimated that 42 of our 57 hospitals received at least moderate damage. Sixty percent of our fire stations and police stations have been damaged. The sheer amount of debris is overwhelming and will become a health hazard in many communities. It is estimated that 48 million tons of debris will be generated, enough to fill 1.5 million trucks. The port of Tampa is severely damaged with the potential for an environmental catastrophe. There were many metric tons of anhydrous ammonia, sulfuric acid and phosphoric acid in the tank farms prior to the storm. In addition, we have lost the millions of gallons of petroleum stored there. The channels leading into the port facilities are filled with debris and the Skyway Bridge has been damaged and will need to be assessed prior to reopening the port. We lost everything. An estimated 843,000 households have been displaced due to this disaster. Approximately 300,000 have sought shelter in existing shelters, as well as other local schools, churches, and businesses. It can't be replaced is the biggest thing. Vicki Dryden is searching for her wedding album, photos taken 61 years ago. She's found a handful of other family heirlooms, but keeps searching for that wedding book. Economically, there is an estimated building-related loss of $200 billion. Bridge and road closures are impacting response and recovery operations. The devastation to the region is almost unimaginable. However, Tampa Bay can recover from this catastrophe. We can rebuild our houses, schools, businesses, and infrastructure, but we have to work together. The key to recovery is to have a regional plan in place long before disaster strikes. In making Tampa Bay's catastrophic plan, we build partnerships between our local, state, and federal government agencies, private businesses, nonprofit organizations, and individual citizens. 
we will be ready so that when the worst case happens, we can and will work together to make Tampa Bay a great place to live, work and play once again.